Okay, this is lesson 33. We're going to work on word problems, quadratic word problems. Um, so, um, it's taking what we've learned so much with, so far with quadratic equations and applying them to real life situations. So, in real life quadratic word problems, like we look at the graph of a quadratic equation. So, it kind of looks like a, like a U, right? Or, or upside down U. And there's a lot of applications to that. Can you guys think of one application you might see that looks like a maybe a parabola or a quadratic equation? Anything? It's very funny. Okay, so um, one example is like a football, right? When someone kicks a football, it kind of looks like it goes up in the air and it kind of gets to the highest point and then it comes down. It kind of looks like a perfect distance, right? It looks like a, a, a quadratic equation. And we use this all the time when we're designing things, engineers are designing things, um, when we want to calculate distances. And there's actually, you know, you use this in physics too when you want to figure out how to have a ball go as far as possible, what angle should you hit it, at what force, and so forth. Okay, so here are the steps. If you're in the video, pause it. So we're going to look at one word problem through this whole lesson, and there's going to be a lot of elements to it, and we kind of have to apply some of the common sense to the real-life situation, okay? So here we go. This is the only example we're looking at, and this question will always be up there. Um, and then the letters A, B, C, and D, we're going to look at those the questions specifically. The height of a punted football can be modeled with a quadratic function h is equal to negative 0.01x squared plus 1.18x plus 2. The horizontal distance in feet from the point of impact with a kicker's foot is x and h is the height of the ball in feet. Find the vertex of the graph of the function. Okay, so the vertex, how do we find the vertex from last week, everyone? What do we... Negative B over 2A, right? So if we, if we imagine a football being kicked, it kind of looks like, like this, right? And there's a highest point up here. We call this the vertex, right? Right, vertex. And we figure out, okay, the vertex, we always have to start with negative B over 2A. Okay, we don't know what this graph looks like. It could look like this. He could kick it too low, and it, this guy blocks it, right? Or he could kick it really high, and it maybe just goes right behind this guy. We don't know that yet until we calculate the graph and everything. So, all right, so, but the question is, find the vertex of the graph, okay? The vertex is going to give us some information because it'll, it'll tell us the height of the ball at its highest point, which is the y. And it'll also tell us how far the ball has gone, which is the x, right? Does that make sense so far? Okay. So find the vertex, so we have to do negative b over 2a. So it's going to be negative 1.18 over 2 times a, which is 2 times negative 0 0.01. Okay. And if I were to calculate this, I could do this by hand, but once these problems become a little bit more advanced in the sense we're doing real life application. Use your calculator. I don't care. Use your calculator. So we got negative 0 0.02. And if I were to calculate this in my calculator, I punch it in and I get 59. Okay, that's the first number of my vertex, which means my vertex is, I'm sorry, erase this. The highest point here is, has gone 59 feet as the x. How do I find the y now? What would I do? Think about last week. What's that? Yeah, we plug it back in, right? So we go back to our equation h is equal to, and whenever I see x, I'm going to plug in 59 in there. So it's going to be negative 0 0.01 x squared. So that's going to be 59 squared plus 1.18. Uh, times x, which is times 59, all plus 2, okay? And if I were to calculate this out, my uh, answer would be 36.81 feet, okay? 
So that would be right here as our vertex point. So what is this saying, okay? What this is saying is that if we were to look at the graph of this, you know, ball, okay, the height of it would be 36.81, right? That's the y. The x-axis is how far it's gone, right? Does that make sense so far? How far has the ball traveled from left to right? All the way across the field, halfway. How many feet has it traveled so far? 59 feet. So how far do you think the ball will go when, really before far. it hits the ball? Or before it hits the ball? Or ah, before it hits the ground? How far? If, if the ball has traveled 59 feet to the halfway point, how far will it go until it hits the ground again? 118, maybe 120, right? Around there. That's pretty <coughs> far, right? That's over the whole football field, right? So how high does the ball go? 36.81. So uh, this is our vertex right here, okay? 30, 59 and 36.81. So this isn't graphed correctly. This is just we're kind of drawing a picture, making sense of things, and we're finding our vertex, okay? So that's the first step, okay? So our first problem. What I'd like you to do right now, I want you to take a moment to write this down. Oh, sorry about that. Push the wrong button here. Or letter B now, okay, so this is the same question at the top, but, or the same scenario. Letter B now says, what is the maximum height of the punt? Let's think common sense-wise, how high did the ball get? What was the highest point? What's that? Let's think through that. Okay, 59, look, look back here. <coughs> What do we say our vertex was? 59. That means it traveled 59 feet, right, horizontally before it got to a maximum height of how high? 30 what? 36.81, right? Okay, so on number or letter B, we would write, we would look at our vertex. We have to use some common sense. We know that the Y part of the vertex, oh, excuse me. We know that it travel. If we're looking at our vertex again, we know that the 59 is the distance that the ball travels to the right. Okay, because that's the x. How far we go on the x-axis? 36.81 is how high it gets. So we would write our answer is 36.81 feet. Okay. So part of part of doing your word problems, you have to apply common sense, and you got to think the relationship between x and y, horizontal distance and height. Okay, does that make sense? All right. So don't just jump to the conclusion to use 59 as your answer. Okay. Okay, here we go. Next one, letter C. The nearest defensive player is five feet horizontally from the point of impact. Okay. Meaning, if the player's kicking the ball, let's say the ball starts down here underneath the player. He kicks the ball, falls through, and this is when it gets released. Is this opponent going to block the ball? That's the question, right? The question is how high must the player reach to block it? So how far is this player away right now at this point? It says the player is five feet away from the ball, right? It's five feet. So this player is, if we're looking down at the x-axis down here, we're going to five. We're wondering, is this player's hands going to block the ball? Yes or no? Okay, so how do we figure that out? Let's think mathematically. What axis is this? X. X, okay. So we have to ask yourself, how high is the ball now at when X is equal to 5, right? When the ball is 5 feet away from the point of impact, how high is it? So we need to find H, right? So the way we figure that out is we go back to the original equation, and you have to plug it in. Whenever we say X, we know X is 5, so we don't know the height yet. So we would want to figure out the height. So we go back to the original equation. X is, H is equal to negative 0.01 x squared plus 1.18 x plus 2. And whenever I see x, we're thinking, how high is the ball at that point? So we need to put... We're asking how high is the ball at 5, so we're going to replace x with 5.
okay? Let me plug in our numbers, okay? Now, like I said, are we going to do this all by hand? We could if you want, but you don't have to do that by hand. We're going to use the tools we have around us. I would just use my calculator. When I get this, we figure out that the height at this point is 7.65 feet. That means when this punter kicks the ball, when it's 5 feet away from him, the height of the ball is 7.65 feet, okay? So, do you think the opponent's going to block the ball? 7.65 feet. Yes or no? Maybe. Well, what if he puts his hands up? His arms up. Do you think he, do you think he, would, he might be able to? Yeah. yeah, he could, right? So... When the ball's at this point, let's say we're able to stop time. We have a remote, like, click, then we click, and you stop it right there. Will he block the ball? Okay, well, he has to be able to reach 7.65 feet, okay, to, to block the ball, okay? So he might, he might not. We don't know, okay? He could be a short opponent, he could be a tall opponent. But he has to be able to reach that height in order to block it, okay? So I'll give you a moment to write this one down. Okay. So here's another the question. Suppose the ball was not blocked. Let's say the, the player kicked the ball again, or the ball was kicked but it wasn't blocked and continued on its path. How far down the field would the ball go go down before hitting? Uh, how far down the field would the ball go before hitting the ground? Okay. We kind of discussed this earlier. How do we figure that out? What's that? Times. We can multiply by two. That's one way. Um, but let's think about. Let's say this is your x and y axis again. Let's say the ball starts here, and it goes, and this is the traveling point, right, all the way to the end here. And we know this is our vertex. What are these points? This is where it's going to land, right? What's this point down here called, where it lands? Mathematically, what's it called? Talked about that. What's that? Solution. A solution or a root or a zero, right? So... How do we find a solution to this this problem? What were the ways I taught you? We could can we factor this this equation? Can I factor it to find the answer? X box? Yeah. You could do X box with decimals? No. no. That's pretty hard, right? Can we do take a square root? No, that's too hard because there's a B. Can we complete the square? Yeah, that'd be still pretty hard though. Can we graph? Graph by hand? No. That's kind of hard. We could graph with a graphing calculator. That, that would be the best way, but what's the last way we could do it? The quadratic formula, right? And it, you could use x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. And you could plug all those numbers in. We know what a, b, and c are. Look up at the equation. You know, a is negative 0.01. B is positive 1.18, and C is 2. So you could plug all those numbers in, use a calculator, and you will get your answer. And the answer is about 120 feet, okay? So, and that's what we predicted earlier, okay? But what's a better way to do this? Well, I want to show you something, a uh, graphing calculator on, on your uh, iPad. So why don't you pull those out? Go to the, the um, app called Desmos. It's kind of green. It's got wiggly lines, graphs on it. Okay. So, let me put the screen up there for you. Okay, so this is what my graphing cal calculator looks like, okay? I put the, that original equation, so I want you to copy this down. Don't worry about the h is equal to, just worry about writing negative 0 0.01, x squared plus 1.18x plus 2, okay? And what this does is it graphs it for you, and we could, uh, when you graph it, you kind of have to, it'll look like it falls off the screen, it kind of looks zoomed in, so you kind of have to zoom, put your finger sideways and zoom out, or in, I think you have to put it in, actually. And zoom out, because we know that the x-axis goes to about 120, right, when I did the quadratic formula, right? There's the Because you have to zoom out. Mm -hmm. You see? So, 
Okay, but look at look at mine right up here, right? We can imagine the player kicking the ball here. It's at zero, and then um, and it goes up to a height of about 36, right? Because the highest point on my y-axis here is 40. Do y'all see that? Y'all see that? So you could graph anything and get the answers. When I say find the answers, you could even use your graphing calculator. Look at where the the points are or the solutions right but we could see look look at this we if there was an actual football player that you know kicked the ball this this ball would go far right it would land at 120 feet right you'll see that so could you do you even have to use the quadratic formula all the time no if you have a tool like the graphing calculator use a graphing calculator okay this is a lot easier. When I was in high school, I figured out how to use my ca graphing calculator. And when my teacher had me do like um, quadratic equations where it says find the answer, I just used my graphing calculator. Okay, and I'm going to spend some time teaching you that because that's a really important skill, especially if you're going to go to college. They're going to want you to know that. And you don't want to be the student that's like, I don't know how to use this because it's kind of one thing, it's embarrassing. And secondly, you're not going to be. You're going to get behind it, and you're not as competitive. So we want you to be competitive when you're there. Okay, so this is a tool. Play around with it when you do your homework tonight. Put, put the actual functions in. There's actually a free version of this on other devices and on the iPhone and iPod, pad and iPod, I guess. All, all of the I, IPs, right? It's called free. Yeah, you can. GradCalc. This is one graphing calculator you could download on anything, or you could also, this one's called Desmos. I like Desmos a lot, but I think it's only for iPad, but you could try it. These are free, okay? Don't download something you have to pay for, okay? And you could even do it right now. And you could actually put every equation in. Any, any equation in, you could get a graph, okay? All right, so if Desmos works, I would suggest you get that one. That one's the best, okay? But this gives you an idea, right? It graphs it for you. So you could figure out, oh, how high does it go? Well, you could actually use the functions on Desmos uh, to figure out what is the vertex up here, right? Well, it would actually precisely tell you what the vertex is. It would tell you it's 59, 36.01. Okay? If you were to tell it to calculate it for you. Okay? And that, that's clearly where it is. Right? It's, all, it's at 59. Right? How high does it go? About 36, right? And then it'll actually exactly tell you what the, your roots are, your answers are, how far the ball goes, okay? So play around with that. Make sure you're on your phone with, with your graphing calculator, not with no texting or anything. Okay, and that's it. That's, the, that's this lesson. So this lesson is kind of hard in the sense that you have to use critical thinking, you got to apply your skills. But that's it, okay?